and I'm still having these episodes. So I'm starting to think that I might have something else going on. Today, Andy is three months old, so it's time to do her three-month update. To give you guys her stats first, because I always do, um, she hasn't been weighed or anything in a while. I wish that I had a baby scale at home to just weigh her like every other week, but I don't have one of those, unfortunately. Um, so I'm just going to guess, and my guess, if I had to take one, I'm going to say anywhere from 12 to 13 pounds, somewhere in there. Because she can't wear size 1 diapers, like, at all. She's very much in size 2s. I would also guess that she's 23 inches, like she was a couple of weeks ago, or three weeks ago, was it, at her doctor's appointment. She was 23 inches long. She's probably still that long. Um, she may have grown just a little bit, like a fourth or a half of an inch. But she's still in three to six month clothes, so and they fit her pretty well. So I don't think she's really growing that much. She is though, however, getting pretty close to being out of three to six month clothes. I'm serious. Like if she grows like one more inch, then she's out of them. So um, I think she's gonna be in six to nine month clothes before she's six months old. I'm gonna guess. I don't know, five months old maybe. She's gonna be in six to nine, which is kind of like. Gosh, kid. <laughs> I'm just so happy that breastfeeding and supplementing is working out and she's growing like she's supposed to because it was such a huge fear of mine before she was here. And while I'm on that subject, um, nursing, I'm still doing that, thankfully. For a second there, and I said this in like my last vlog, yes I did, my last vlog on Friday I said that I thought I was going to have to start pumping for her because she went on this huge nursing strike and she did not want to nurse. I would latch her and she would get really stiff and she'd pull back on me like this and her eyes would get really wide and she would fuss like every time. Um, she was not having it. And she was sleeping a lot. Like, I was going to have to start waking her up to feed her because I was getting worried she was going to lose weight. And starting yesterday, she's done with her nursing strike. She's finally thrown in the towel. And when I put her to breast, she actually... Here, let me, let me move her because her little head is not where I want it to be. Here, you can, you can be like this, honey. Anyway, I'm sorry. I didn't want her little head to keep flopping. <laughs> Nope. Let's try this. Let's see if this is any better. Anyway, when I put her to breast now, she actually latches and she nurses and she's not fighting me anymore. Oh, thank God. So our nursing is back to where it was. I was really starting to mourn the fact that that was going to have to end. But it's not, thankfully, yay. She was sleeping like four plus hours, four or five, somewhere in there, and then eating and being awake for a little bit because she's starting to have awake periods, go back to sleep for another four or five hours. Now, and that was during the nursing strike, and that was the week of misery, as I'm going to call it, uh, now she is sleeping about three to four hours, much better than four to five, and she um, eats, has her awake periods, and she's not wanting to relax. <laughs> She is just not wanting me to sit down and talk to you guys. When she does eat, she eats about four ounces of formula and then she nurses. When I was pumping, I was doing uh, four ounces of formula and like 
two ounces of breast milk, but she wouldn't take the whole bottle sometimes. So she's taking anywhere from four to six ounces. It just depends on how hungry she is. Sometimes she does drink the whole six ounce bottle and you're like, you are three months old. You do know that, right? <laughs> and sometimes she just drinks like five. She's still not sleeping all the way through the night. I am not used to this, you guys. I kid you not, with Carly and Kenley, they were sleeping through the night at about a month old, and they slept the entire night. I'm talking like, I don't know, I can't really remember, like 9, 10 at night until like 8, 9 the next morning. Oh yeah, I kid you not, they slept wonderful. Annie, not so much. <laughs> not, not really a sleeping person. <laughs> she wakes up anywhere from like, 5 to 7 30 in the morning wanting to nurse again and then she'll probably wake up a couple of hours later like around 9 9 30 wanting to eat again uh, because I only nurse her at night I don't make bottles at night still so she only nurses and she doesn't get as full off of breast milk as she does with the formula and breast milk so she's waking up more often so when she wakes up at like five to seven somewhere in there ish she wakes up again around 9 9 30 because she's not full and then she has her formula and that's her usually her first bottle of the day her little looks are starting to change i'm noticing that she's looking more like her sisters and not so much like her own little person anymore <laughs> like she was when she was first born i was like oh my gosh she just looks like Andy. She doesn't look like anybody. But now she's starting to resemble her sisters. If I can find pictures of uh, Carly and Kenley at this age, I'll put them all down here and I'll show you like an idea of what they all look like at this age. And I think that Andy, I'll put Andy in the middle. I think that um, Andy resembles her sisters. I think more Carly's like face shape and Kenley's everything else, like her eyes and everything like that. But um, I do think that she's starting to look like her sisters. And I know it's funny that I'm not saying, oh, she looks like me or oh, she looks like daddy. But I, the only person that I can swear looks just like me or Devin is Kenley. Kenley looks like she just fell out of Devin's butt. She looks just like him. Like face shape and he, she's got his dimples and like everything. That child is all her dad. So Carly, I don't think looks like not either me or Devin. And Andy, I think she looks like her sisters, because she doesn't look like me or Devin either. She is just so comfy in this position. I wish I could, like, turn her around and show you, you know, her face and everything, but she's, she's comfy, and she was cranky earlier. As far as development, she's starting to have longer awake periods, like, um, long enough to where you can actually put her down under her play mat or anything like that, and she'll actually be awake for a little while. Not very long. Anywhere from like 15, maybe, I think this is pushing it. I think 30 minutes is pushing it. Maybe 20 minutes is definitely not 30. That's, yeah, I'm going to say 15 to 20 minutes. She'll be awake and then she'll want to go back to sleep. She finally found her voice. This child is finally cooing. It started like a week ago. She finally started to coo and I was like, oh, this is so great. I have noticed that her development is more on track with her actual due date. Like, she will probably do things that a three-month-old is doing in like three weeks. Because a month ago, she was not cooing, she was not smiling, you know, things that two-month-olds, or I was noticing a lot of two-month-olds were doing, Andy wasn't doing. But we're now, you know, well, not one hour, four weeks later, but <laughs> uh, three weeks later, suddenly she started doing it, which is more on track with her due date. So I just think she's going to be a tad bit of a late bloomer. She's not going to do things exactly on time. Like, she's not holding her head really really still yet she's still having a hard time with that reflex to jerk it down um, she's still not perfectly steady with her head it's getting better and she's a belly sleeper too so she's on her belly all the time practicing those muscles to lift her neck and um, it's still where it is so I think it's going to start getting a lot better closer to four months and she's already trying to roll she's trying so hard to do it she gets about halfway e either side when she's on her belly and she wants to roll over but she's not there so I think she'll probably do it next month as far as me and how I'm doing at three months postpartum physically speaking I'm doing pretty good I've lost well it's a little over 10 pounds now 
because I've lost a little bit more, but not a lot. So I'm feeling physically great. I'm not back to pre-pregnancy clothes, but my maternity stuff is huge on me. I'm in that place right now. <laughs> and it's kind of funny because literally the only thing that fits me are these black shorts. I know you all see me wear these a lot, but they are seriously so comfortable and the only comfortable thing that fits me. The only jeans I have are either too big or too small. <laughs> there is no in between. I haven't exercised in like two weeks because we've been doing our living room remodel, which is better. Can't wait to show you guys in another vlog what our house now looks like because it's very different. <laughs> anyway, um, I haven't exercised in a while, but I want to get back to it now that I have a living room to do it in. But yeah, overall speaking, uh, physically I'm doing great. Mentally, however, that's a different story. I don't know if it's postpartum depression. I've always thought that I have these depressive episodes because of the situation. Like when I lived with my dad, me and my stepmom have always had a very troublesome relationship. Always butting heads, always arguing. I mean, it was just not a very friendly or pleasant relationship because we butted heads so much. So when I lived with my dad, I thought the depressive episodes were because, you know, of the situation. And I've always contributed the, what I've been feeling to the situation. Devin and I have started from nothing. When we first got together, we literally had nothing because like a couple weeks was it after I moved in with Devin in September of 2013, the ceiling of the roof that we were living in at the time collapsed, like just fell. And we lost a lot of, st we just lost a lot of stuff in that house. Um, I'm trying not to go to a big story, but we lost like a lot. And Dev and I have, re have had to rebuild our whole lives from the ground up like everything. So when I would have depressive episodes in the past, I always contributed it to situation. Oh, it's because we are living pretty close to the poverty line and that's hard on people. You know, it's hard being poor. So I just thought that's what it was. But Devin and I are no longer poor and we live in not the nicest house in the world, as you guys know, because we are cleaning it up, but it's still a house and it's still three bedrooms and it's still, you know, it's not a little thing. It's not a two bedroom apartment that we were living in. It's a nice house and our situation's different. Devin's got a really good job and I'm still having these episodes. So I'm starting to think that I might have something else going on. Um, I've done a little bit of Google and I'm not a psychologist, I'm not a therapist, I can't do any kind of real like diagnosis. But if I had to guess, and this is really just me guessing, I think that I have something called bipolar hypodepressive mania. And I cycle really fast because I have days where, like today, like today is a really good day. I'm happy and I'm very up and I've got a lot of energy and oh my goodness, did you see that? Oh, and I'm very productive today and I've been getting a lot of stuff done today and I just, my energy's up and I, I feel good. I feel happy and today's a good day. But yesterday was awful. I wanted to do nothing but lay on my couch and cry. And I tried so hard not to be that way. I was like trying to get stuff done and I was trying to pick myself up and try to make myself happy. And I could not get out of this just depressive pit. It was horrible. I just wanted to just bawl my eyes out all day. Had no energy, but still tried to get stuff done. And I, and these, it happens all the time. Like I will have this day and then I will have a bad day and I just go back and forth, back and forth. If I had to guess, I mean, I don't know, maybe a professional will think of something different or tell me something different. But if I had to guess, I think I might have that. And my depression is not situational. It's something I've been dealing with since I was like a teenager. So, and I'm almost 26 and just now realizing I just might have bipolar. I do have an appointment with a therapist at the end of the month um, to see somebody and to get this figured out because I'm really tired of this affecting my life. And it does affect my whole life. Um, on my bad days, I don't do anything. And I feel so bad for my kids. And I really just don't want to feel this way anymore. I just want to be, you know, happy and middle of the road. So hopefully at the end of the month when I get seen, um, things will change and I won't have to cycle like this, like I do all the time. Or maybe, I don't know, maybe I just will cycle and I'll have to just learn how to 
deal with it instead. I don't know what the, I don't know what the treatment is for bipolar, but, um, that's, I don't know. Or maybe she'll diagnose me something different. I guess we'll see. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to follow me on social media, my links are down below and I will see you guys later in a new vlog. Bye guys.